Hey, hey, Marcus House with you here, and welcome to episode 22 in our quick progression series. Today, we're continuing on our space station build using our super lifter. This segment's going to be our habitat segment of the space station, and we're going to start by using the top of what we previously had built for our part one segment. Just keeping a single docking port and battery on the top, and we're going to use these MK3 passenger modules, two of them, and we're going to uh, finalize that underneath with the MK3 adapter again. Under that adapter that goes to the 2.5, we're going to grab the largest reaction wheel we can, and we're then going to grab eight lights, and we're going to put them in a symmetry eight, and these are going to light up the arms of our habitat module. Doing the same at the top as well, pointing those backwards the opposite direction and another large docking port down the bottom to cap that off. Essentially this unit will be able to be utilized as the central core unit and it can be attached from either side. Now just going to add eight radial attachment ports evenly around the center of our MK3 passenger modules. And now just attaching eight MK1 crew cabins to the attachment ports. And we're gonna to try to get those windows pointed perfectly upwards just so they look nice using the rotation tool. And a second set on the top of that now, making 16 of those. Next, we're actually going to whack two science labs on the end of these arms here. Just using our rotation keys to get that aligned properly and drop that on there. Now, some of you out there really love watching these builds. Some of you don't so much. So that's why it is sped up quite a bit. If you want to see the build in more detail, simply switch it back to half speed in the YouTube controls. Adding in a Rocket Max brand adapter just so that we can tidy up the connection between our MK1 crew cabins and the science labs. And now what we want to do is rotate the entire core from the docking port downwards so that the arms of our habitat module are going to fall in between the fuel tanks and the rocket engines of the super lifter. That's looking pretty good there now so we're just going to add that second science lab unit. And then we'll cap that off at the other side with the same Rocker Max brand adapter again. Actually, we'll just grab a large battery and stick that in between the adapter. And we're going to now grab the Hub Max multi point connector and stick on the end. On the north facing side of the multi point connector, we're going to add the Clampatron docking port. That's going to mean, of course, that we can have eight small vessels docked to the habitat part of our space station here. And you can see I was kind of fighting to get the rotation corrected there on that one. The junior docking port is going to be attached to the south facing side of the connector there in the same way. We'll just get that rotated correctly as well. We are certainly not going to have any shortage of docking ports on this thing. Adding the medium sized FLR25 RCS fuel tank right on the end of that multi port connector and also then grabbing the thruster block and sticking that right in the center of that RCS tank. And now we're just going to start adding some more crew cabins. Firstly, we're going to add two more on the right hand side of our multi port connector. Another Rocker Max adapter there. And then we're going to add on the Hitchhiker storage container. These hold four Kerbals each alone. Again, just playing around with the rotation tools just to get the windows of the MK1 facing upwards correctly and then obviously readjusting the hitchhiker container and uh, and setting that so that that's rotated correctly. Another Rocker Max brand adapter to attach to the opposite side of that hitchhiker container and then we're going to add two more crew cabins on the left hand side arm of the multi point connector. Now this is the more tricky fiddly bit. Basically what we want to do is adjust the rotation and the position of our hitchhiker container there so that it basically connects or at least looks like it connects nice and evenly to both arms. Now as we get that rotation finalized and about correct you can see there that we've sort of got quite a gap. Now what we can actually do here is use our move tool to grab the multi point connector or any other part of the arms uh, coming from the central core and just adjust them in and out so that our spacing for our hitchhiker container is about spot on. That's about right there. So we'll just add two Werner engines to the left and right hand side of the RCS tank there. And just for emergency purposes only really, we're just going to add a solar panel array there to the end of the hitchhiker containers. Just going to do some adjustments to the lights on the top and bottom of the vessel now. We're going to do some just small rotational tweaks just to make sure that the lights are actually pointing, you know, outwards over the, uh, over the arms right out to the end really so that they're just touching on those docking ports. 
doing that to both of those obviously and also going to set the uh, strength of the light down to around 0.6 just so that it isn't quite so bright sometimes it can be a bit overwhelmingly bright now I just want to use some struts to tie all of this together just so it's nice and stable we're going to first start by attaching the struts to the top of the MK3 adapter down onto the science labs and we'll do that same thing to the bottom section as well and actually I've just realized that the lights are still on so we'll turn those off quickly now just going to start securing the outside of our habitat units there we're going to attach some struts from the MK3 uh, fuel tank adapters there down to the hitchhiker containers and actually you can probably see the position and rotation of the hitchhiker container there still isn't quite spot on so I'm just tweaking that a little more of course that whole thing's only attached from the left hand side so we're going to add a strut just to join it to the right hand side MK1 crew cabins Saving that now is our Super Lifter Space Station Part 2. What I'm going to do now is just set up the lights action group so that we also, as well as turning on the lights in the central core of the, uh, the habitat unit, we also want to turn on all of the MK1 crew cabins as well as the MK3 passenger modules as well. And just in case we ever need them, we're going to assign the solar panels to pop out on our custom group 10. And I've just noticed our struts are looking a little bit funny, so we're going to re-add the struts to the top. And we've also got to add the same struts to the bottom of this segment as well. So there isn't a great deal more that this habitat unit's going to need to do, so I think we're pretty much right to launch here now. Out to the launch pad now, and what you may have noticed is that our thrust to weight and the actual weight of the entire vessel here is almost identical to part one. That's actually more by coincidence than anything. What we need to do is first head off to the map view and we're going to time warp around until our Prosperity space station is just passing over the top of the desert continent just prior to the KSC. If you watched the last docking episode, episode 21, you will have noticed this was about where we did our launch from at that time as well. So just coming up to there and... Uh, oh. Uh... <laughs> Uh, that is obviously not what I wanted at all. I would say just the act of jumping in and out of time warp has made the vessel wobble around a little bit which made the actual launch pad completely explode. That's great. After a quick load though we'll jump straight back over into our tracking station this time, get the timing set up for our launch and then we'll actually pop it on the pad after the fact. Just jumping back through the vehicle assembly building out back to the launch pad and this time we can just do our launch straight away without actually doing any time accelerating at all. Stability assist on and launching. The launch profile for this one's going to be almost identical as what we saw in episode 20. What you'll notice is we're not going to start actually pitching over a great deal until after we pass around 150 meters per second. It is a good idea, however, just to point just a few degrees towards the 90 degree marker, just so that you're already pointing in the right direction by the time you start doing a gravity turn. Speaking of which, that time is now, so we've hit that prograde marker, and we'll just let the stability assist uh, help us out with that gravity turn as we ascend. Obviously, due to the massive drag that this vessel is experiencing, we want to get out of the atmosphere, or at least as high up out of the atmosphere as we can before we start rolling over too heavily. We just don't want to lose too much velocity due to atmospheric drag. As well as in the few previous episodes, you'll notice that I'm trying to keep that inclination as low to zero as I can by moving slightly up or down on the nav ball there, depending on which direction is going to give me the better result on the inclination readout. I must admit that whenever I'm using the super lifter, I'm looking down at my fuel left thinking there is no way I'm going to make this. But it's surprising just how much thrust to weight these engines have when the tanks are almost empty. Over a thousand meters per second in velocity now and our apoapsis just up there near 70,000 meters. have just dropped a half throttle as well just so that we can lean over as close to that 90 degree marker as we can. Leaning over now we've just dropped that throttle even more. We don't actually want to come up above 90,000 meters for our apoapsis and this is simply because that is the altitude of our Prosperity space station. We'll just cut our engines entirely here now and we'll just wait until we get up closer to our apoapsis marker. 
And as we approach around one minute to our apoapsis, we'll kick our engines back in and see if we can get the rest of the way up to 90,000 meters. And that'll do there. And geez, we are very close to that station right now. I can see it coming up on us. That's actually extremely cool. It's going to be interesting to know how close we actually are when we circularize our orbit, when we hit the apoapsis marker there. Only a few seconds left to go until we reach our apoapsis marker and firing. There we go, just to bring this up, ready to circularize. There's only really a few hundred meters per second that we needed to gain just at this. So just a few seconds, three, two, one, and main engine cut off there now. And whoa, look at that, we are so close. We are so close, only five kilometers. We'll just set it as the target, which really we should have done before anyway. And where is it? There it is, there up above us, only 5.4 kilometers away. That is awesome. Now, I have never ever been able to get that close on the initial launch before, that is wicked. So although that is really close, we'll have a look at our intersect markers to see if they're closer. We'll have a look at the orange and pink markers. And actually, there we go. It's only 1.2 kilometers away when we hit those pink markers. So we'll time accelerate around to there. We'll warp around just until we're coming up prior that intersect marker. And luckily as well, this is in the sunlight, which is really, really handy. So we can actually start doing our docking maneuvers in the light. And where are you? I've lost it again. <laughs> it's the second time I've lost it. There it is there, only 1.6 kilometers at the moment. Just need to switch the RCS on our super lifter here and turn towards the retrograde marker in target mode because obviously we're going to be wiping off that relative velocity. That being said, we're not going to wipe that relative velocity off until our distance stops decreasing and starts increasing. So we're just waiting for this to come down here now. About 1100 meters in distance there and it's starting to climb back up. So we're going to wipe that velocity off now. Down to 1.3 meters per second in difference now. We'll turn those lights on so that we get a nice view and we are going to decouple the central part, our habitat unit. Decoupling that there. And we'll just apply a small amount of thrust just to move ourselves out. And look at that there. That is a thing of beauty. It's a good thing that the struts on the super lifter don't appear to obey the laws of physics. They just pass straight through those science labs like they're not even there, which is a very useful thing in this case. Otherwise, we'd be in all sorts of trouble right now. So with our super lifter, we'll switch back into orbit mode on our nav ball, turn towards that retrograde marker, and we're going to wipe off a bit of speed just to put some distance between our space station parts. Just brought that periapsis down to 74 kilometers. So we're switching over to the first part of our space station, the actual engine side, and that's just simply so we can easily make up the vast majority of our distance between the two vessels. Remembering, of course, that our habitat module really only has some RCS thrusters, so it's a bit hard to get that the distance needed. Obviously, I'm just speeding this whole segment up for you, so you're not watching this in real time. It takes quite a while to get these docking maneuvers right, especially with big craft. Just wiping off that relative velocity, we're still almost a kilometer away from the habitat modules. After wiping off that velocity, pointing obviously again to the target, doing another small burn, just so we can edge ourselves closer and closer to close that distance. When approaching your target, it is just a matter of doing a few burns towards the target and then wiping off the velocity as soon as you get as close as you're going to get burning towards the target again, and just repeating that basically until you're right smack bang on top of the thing. Only around 50 meters distance there now, just slowly wiping off that last bit of velocity as we pass by. Now it's almost taken half an orbit to actually get our two vessels that close, so as the sun sets, we're going to just try to keep close, but we want to actually complete the docking maneuver as we hit the sunrise on the opposite side of Kerbin. With the magic of video editing, here we are on the opposite side of Kerbin watching the sun rise from our two very close vessels. We've switched to the habitat unit as our active vessel and we're switching our camera mode into locked mode, obviously, so that we can complete our docking. Just using those I, J, K and L keys to adjust our translational position in relation to the part one section of that space station. And for some reason, everything's back the front. I didn't have the right docking port selected as my control docking port. Of course, this was just intentional. I thought it best to demonstrate to you what not to do when docking. Uh, yeah, right. 
As we get close, just tapping that end key just to remove some of that approaching speed. The hardest thing when docking two vessels of this size is basically trying to get the angles lined up and what we want to do is just slightly touch. Then as long as we can keep the two docking ports basically touching each other, they will pull themselves together over time using the magnetic force. So in we come here, just about to touch and ah, oh, bounced a little bit there. Just compensate there using the H&N keys to make sure that you can kind of stick to it. Stability assist off, it should pull it together and here we go there, that is beautiful. <laughs> that is really, really awesome. We'll just try switching the lights on and off, making sure they're all working. They are, that's great. So the only thing left to do now is come and land the super lifter, which we need to bring back from orbit. What is in store for the next part of our space station? I've already got several parts of that built, but I'm still finalizing that, so that will be up soon as well. Just a slight retrograde burn here to bring our periapsis down into the ocean on the opposite side of Kerbin. Prior to entering the atmosphere, we will pull out those air brakes. These are going to help wipe off a lot of our velocity. I'm going to speed through this descent because I know you watched this same sort of process in episode 20, but it's still fun to watch, I think, trying to land this super lifter. As we get closer there, we're just going to give it a quick burst with the thrusters just to bring ourselves down to around the 2,000 meters per second. Just got those RCS thrusters on so that we can keep ourselves easily pointed towards that retrograde marker. By keeping it as close to dead center of that retrograde marker, you can be assured that the friction will be distributed evenly among all those parts facing the atmosphere. That's about as much heat as those air brakes are going to take, so we've just brought those back in down now around the 1600 meters per second mark and firing there now as well to wipe off a little more velocity we need to stop our engines exploding just need to take a little bit more heat off ourselves still coming in a little fast but that's okay because we can pop out those air brakes and wipe off all that velocity those air brakes are great for controlling that last bit of descent and the drogue chutes are out there now as well of course and out come the main parachutes as soon as they fully come out and deploy, that brings us down to around 40 meters per second in our velocity. And... Uh, touchdown there again. Not quite as close as I got in episode 20, but pretty good. Lights off and air brakes in. Ah, oh dear. Okay, so we'll just have a look at our fuel. So there's still 800 fuel left, so that's great. Now we could recover our vessel, but we're not going to do that. Instead, we're just going to jump straight back to our space center, leaving this big super lifter out there next to the launch pad. This may very well form part of our next episode, but as we sign off today, we're going to show just how stable our new habitat module is. Prior to this episode being recorded, I did a few tests to make sure that our habitat unit was very, very stable. I wanted something that was very evenly weighted and this would mean that if we're pushing the vessel with our large array of atomic rocket motors we wouldn't end up with a lot of wobbling going on. So this rotational test was basically just to see just how fast we could rotate this thing. I'd say by now it's past the tests and boom there it goes. <laughs> Of course, if there was any issues with weight, it would <laughs> if there was any issues with weight, it would not survive a rotation anything even close to that. So I hope you enjoyed that video. If you have any questions for me, whack them down in the comments below. Thanks very much to all my wonderful subscribers. Thank you, thank you. And for those who haven't subscribed, please do subscribe to see more. Follow me on Twitter at Marcus House Game, and we'll see you in the next video. We wanted to make sure here, or Bill wanted to make sure that there was no damage incurred by the superlifter, which really just hauled this thing up into orbit. Also checking out the integrity of the solar panels, and just before Bill heads back, he looks out towards the sun and reflects on just how small he is in comparison to the wonderful universe.